Hi everybody, this is Professor Troy. I'm here to talk to you today about open channel flow. We're going to start with open channel flow classifications. Um, before we get into that, I should probably tell you what an open channel flow is. An open channel flow is a flow, usually of water, that has a free surface, meaning that it's unpressurized and open to the atmosphere. So there are a lot of different applications for civil engineers and other kinds of engineers for open channel flow. Um, and I think I'll start by just giving you a couple of those different examples. Here we have a couple of different open channel flows that we think about as engineers, rivers and streams. Rivers are important because they can flood. They can also convey water away uh, that has various uh, types of water quality. They can have uh, rivers have and streams have different substances in them that may be harmful or beneficial. Um, streams, you may be trying to restore a stream to have some natural function uh, associated with that stream and to really uh, benefit the ecosystem and the, and the surrounding area, maybe for recreation as well. Sewers are really important. Anytime you are designing a, a city or a development, you have to make sure that you're going to be able to convey the, the stormwater runoff. That's the, the water from rain as well as the municipal runoff, which is from um, houses and businesses. Um, and so a partially full sewer is actually a good example of an open channel flow. Once the, once the pipe is entirely full, then it's pressurized and that's more covered um, by what we learned in the pipe flow uh, section of the course. Um, but a partially full sewer is an open channel flow. Um, agricultural ditches, you have to design those in order to convey the, the water off the land and maybe even actually filter out pollutants as it's making its way to a, a receiving water like a stream. And then in the realm of transportation engineering, uh, roads, one of the primary considerations for the design of roads is actually trying to make sure that you design them so that when it rains, the water will quickly and efficiently run into the gutters and not be on the road where it can cause a hazard to motorists. Okay, let me introduce you to the cast of uh, variables that are starring in this open channel play. Um, for a lot of this unit, we're going to be thinking about um, a rectangular channels. So obviously a river or a more natural stream has a very different geometry than the rectangular one that I'm showing you here. Um, but uh, let me get my laser pointer going here. Um, but if it's rectangular, we are going to call the width B and the depth will be Y. Okay, So the depth is, is really the primary variable in open channel flow. I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, some of the other variables that we have in open channel flow, um, we have the total flow rate. So flow rate is denoted by uppercase Q. That's going to be meters cubed per, per second or feet cubed per second. Um, we have the actual flow depth that I mentioned. That's going to be called Y. That is uh, the, the thickness of the flow. The channel width, I mentioned that if it's rectangular. Um, one of the new variables that we have is called the specific flow rate. The specific flow rate is just the total flow rate divided by the width. So the units are flow rate per unit width. The other thing that we have here is the average velocity, Q over A. That's the average velocity over the cross section. One thing to note is that if you're using this lowercase Q, um, it ends up being Q over Y um, because the B cancels out in the numerator and the denominator. <clears throat> The last thing is pressure. So for pipe flow, pressure is a really big deal, right? We think about pressure, we try to calculate it, it's driving the flow, we're losing pressure to friction. In open channel flow, because the, because the, the pressure distribution in the flow is approximately hydrostatic, once you know the flow depth, you actually know the pressure that's acting on the flow. So um, I guess more importantly, the pressure and the depth are not independent parameters. And so if you are tracking the depth, effectively the pressure is kind of rolled into that variable. So you're not going to see pressure at all in the open channel flow unit. Um, and that's not because it's not important, but it's just that be, uh, because the depth of the flow is going to fully determine the pressure uh, and its effect on the flow. Okay, so all of the equations will only involve the flow depth. Okay, let's get a bit into the flow classification now. Okay, so um, the simplest kind of open channel flow is what we call steady uniform flow. So steady as before means that the flow is not changing in time. 
Uniform in this case means that the flow depth is not changing with distance downstream. Okay, so we have just one flow rate for this system here. Um, and the flow is going from left to right. I guess I should have writ written down that arrow uh, to show you that direction, but that's the first law of fluid mechanics anyway. Hopefully you already know that. Um, but the idea is that the flow depth is not changing with distance downstream. Okay, and for this kind of a flow, uh, the dynamics are such that the gravity which is pulling the water down the channel is exactly balancing the friction from the bottom and the sides of the channel. That's really the definition of uniform flow. It's, it's exactly analogous to uh, a block sliding down a plane at a terminal velocity. Okay, so friction and gravity are exactly in balance. I mentioned that. Um, in reality, uniform flow rarely occurs in nature or even in engineered channels, and that's because the flow is always adjusting to changes downstream and upstream. Um, and uh, most channels are changing from one location to the next as the flow goes. You can imagine the, the Wabash River, right? So the Wabash River has one cross section here, 100 yards downstream, it's got a completely different cross section. And the flow is never able to actually fully realize this perfect balance between gravity and friction, which is kind of like a terminal velocity. Nevertheless, open channel flow design is almost entirely governed by the equations that we'll learn for steady uniform flow. There's an equation called Manning's equation, basically the most important equation in open channel flow. Um, and almost all of our engineering designs are going to be based around the assumption of steady uniform flow. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're kind of working through this unit. Um, but this is kind of the most classic and the most uh, basic kind of open channel flow. It's actually pretty boring, right? The flow depth does not vary from one location to the next. One minor point here, the subscript N. You might think, why don't we have subscript U for uniform? Um, subscript N actually means normal. So the other uh, word that you'll hear in place of uniform flow is normal flow. Uh, so the flow is normal if it's uniform. Okay, that's just a bit of terminology. So this video here is showing open channel flow of water going down a corrugated uh, channel is a good example of maybe uh, uniform flow. So the flow would be in balance with the friction uh, from the bottom of the channel that is acting to slow down the water and then gravity which is trying to move the water downhill. So this is kind of a good example of, of uniform flow. Okay, let's run through a couple of the classifications for open channel flow. The first one that we can think about is whether the flow is changing in time. And so as before, the idea is a steady flow is not changing in time. Um, so let's look at a clip or a couple of clips of steady flows. Okay, those were examples of steady flows, and one thing to note is that, you know, even though there are waves and turbulence in the flow, uh, when we talk about steady or unsteady, we're really talking about sort of the mean flow or uh, not the part of the flow that has waves and turbulence. So if the basic flow rate is oscillating about some value that's not changing in time, that's still a, a steady flow, even though there might be uh, fairly large oscillations. Um, now let's look at an unsteady flow. So in general, most flows in reality are to some degree unsteady. Um, oftentimes we can assume that they're steady enough for uh, the, the approximation of steady flow. Um, and But I did find a cool clip of an unsteady flow, which is a uh, flash flood from uh, Utah. So I'll, I'll give you the link to the video, and I just want to show a bit of the clip from YouTube here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so we talked about time classifications or temporal classifications. Now let's talk about spatial classifications. By spatial, we're talking about how the flow is varying with distance downstream or whether it's varying at all. Uniform flow, again, is where the flow is not varying with distance downstream. The other uh, type of flow that we have is what's non-uniform, so it is varying in the downstream distance. And the first kind of flow we can think about that's non-uniform is gradually varied. So most rivers and streams where they are not, um, where they're in sort of a tranquil section are, are gradually varying. The depth is slowly changing as the channel changes. Um, and a good example of that would be something like the Wabash River at Lafayette, uh, where the flow depth is, is slowly adjusting to changes in the channel, the, the cross section and the slope, the bottom slope of the channel. Um, these flows here are good examples of gradually varied flow. The one on the lower left is only gradually varied where I've labeled it, not the waterfall part. And then of course we have the Wabash River here. This is what it looks like near Lafayette, near Purdue. Um, the depth of the flow is changing slowly. The channel is changing pretty slowly. And this is another good example of gradually varied flow. All right, let's move on to the other classification, um, rapidly varied flow. Okay, so rapidly varied flow is the last spatial classification. It is as it seems, rapidly varied flow is where the flow varies rapidly. So good examples of that are a hydraulic jump. I'll show you a, a picture of that and you'll have a lab on that. And then also a waterfall where the flow, the flow abruptly uh, cascades over a uh, waterfall or something like that. These are good examples of rapidly varied flows where you see the white water in particular. Uh, this one with the triple step, that's a real rapidly varied flow as well. Okay, I think I'll end with this one figure here. This is from the Munson textbook. Uh, it's just reminding us that all of these different spatial flow classifications can actually happen in, this, in a single uh, river or system. Um, and so here it's showing you all the different uh, locations in the system where you might have rapidly varied flow or uniform flow or gradually varied flow. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that for a steady flow, which is most of what uh, we look at as engineers, um, this picture would not be changing in time, or would, at least we would be assuming that it wouldn't be changing in time. Um, and so how does the river do that? How does, how does the depth go up and down but the flow rate remains constant? Um, the velocity is going to speed up and slow down uh, in accordance with Q is equal to VA. Uh, so the, the flow depth is adjusting, the flow velocity is adjusting, but the flow rate would stay constant through the whole system. Um, not only spatially, but in time, that's really the meaning of the steady flow. Okay, well that's enough yapping for one lecture. Hopefully this has been helpful in, in introducing you to some of the different ways that we think about open channel flow and classification. Next up is the fruit number.